Welcome, everyone, to the Believe in Bingo podcast right here on Bally Sports Ohio. I'm Solomon Wilcox, and right now I'm joined by a very special guest and a very good friend of CincinnatiInquirer.com. That's right, Charles Goldsmith. Charlie G is what we call him because he's coming with the knowledge today. Uh, how's it going, Charlie? You doing well today? I'm doing well. How about you? Hey, doing excellent. And by the way, our, our Cincinnati Bengals are doing great. They're now on this four-game win streak. They've won five of their last six ball games. After getting off to this 0-2 season or 0-2 start, giving all of us Anjana. Um, for you, what has been the biggest difference? You're with this team on the day-to-day. -day. What has been some of the biggest touch points that you've seen with this team? It comes down to a pretty simple story. Joe Burrow couldn't move in September. He couldn't run. He couldn't scramble. He couldn't be creative in that way. And now he's doing that as well as anyone in football. Maybe you can put Mahomes and Allen on that tier of off-script plays. But, you know, look at the Bengals over these last two games, San Francisco and then Buffalo. How many of the biggest moments of the game have been off-schedule, off-script, creative plays? Against San Francisco, you know, how many times have we all watched the ridiculous third and 10, escape break, 14 sacks, find T. Higgins, um, Joe Burrow, all of his big scrambles in that game. Then Buffalo was very similar, two huge scramble uh, off off schedule um, scramble drills to uh, T. Higgins that ended up being significant plays, as well as a big run from Burrow as well. That changes drives, that wins games. Look, and, and that's, you're right. And, and I look, it's been a four game win streak, but it's really, over the last two games that we've seen this explosion in production um, with the offense and particularly with Joe Burrow, because in those two games, five touchdowns, no interceptions, he's completed 80% of his passes over the last two games against some really good teams. And I think the rest of the league has really um, paid attention to wins on the road against the 49ers, a big time win on Sunday night against the Buffalo Bills and Joe Burrow has been at his best. I don't think he's getting enough uh, attention for just the completion percentage, like you mentioned. Like, yeah. it is very hard in the NFL to win downs. It is a league where the defense, they're going to get you. That's what they're paid to do. They're on scholarship too. But the rate that Burrow just isn't getting confused isn't how many times did the Bengals throw something at Josh Allen that he didn't read and they win that down. That's not happening to Joe. He's making the right decision pretty much every single time. Every time the ball is going exactly where the coaches want it to, add the accuracy, add the explosiveness, add the protection. And again, they said this in the team meeting on Monday. When they're playing like this, no one's going to stop them. Charlie, and, and look, another thing that's hadn't not gotten past me Last couple of weeks, more of since we've come off the bot, more of Joe Burrow under center. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's really helped our run game. I think it's helped the timing and it's helped his timing in the pocket and a better feel for in the pocket and his, and his movements. What have you seen? What have the coaches said about just getting Joe Burrow under center and what it's meant for the offense? So, number one, it's helped the run game. But the reason they weren't doing it previously is because they hadn't seen enough signs for what it could do for the passing game. They abandoned their under center offense last year because it was predictable. This year they came in with a package of plays where one sets up another in a very interesting and a very complimentary way. They've used a lot of under center with Boyd in motion. And once it'll be a jet sweep, then it'll be a fake jet sweep tossed to Mixon. Once it'll be Chase in motion running a dig route. Later it'll be Boyd doing the same thing with Chase as a decoy. One play sets up another in a really interesting way. They're not just going under center. They're doing stuff with it. And again, they found new ways and committed to finding ways that feature the passing game with Burrow under center. These last two games it didn't get by me. They were very sneaky about this, by the way. Because we now have tight ends involved in the offense. Mm -hmm. I found it in the Sunday night game. You had Tanner Hudson. You had Irv Smith Jr. You had Drew Sample. They combined together for 10 catches, 110 yards, and two touchdowns. They literally became a not just a bigger part of the passing game, the focal point of the passing game. So the touchdown to Drew Sample where he jumped and did the high of pose no one guarded him on that play. That's right. And that's very telling. The Bengals' tight ends weren't viewed as a threat. Um, give him a one-on-one -on -one matchup with – I know it was a safety he scored the touchdown on, Irv Smith, but he gets a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups in line, against linebackers. Yeah. His teams weren't respecting him. Yeah. 
Now, these tight ends won't, won't have these type of games every time, but like there have been games over the year, think Carolina in 22, think Vegas in 21, where Joe Mixon had crazy games. Yeah. That made defenses respect the Bengals' run game for the rest of the year because they proved, you know, they said, we can beat you this way. And if you're going to not respect this and not honor this, we'll attack it. And now the Bengals can say that about their tight ends. I think they'll be getting more attention overall. They won't be featured ever, but that'll help keep everything open for everyone else. we got to cover the defense because over this four-game win streak, um, they have not allowed more than 20 points during those last four games. In fact, they're giving up an average of 17 points a game during this four-game win streak. More importantly, Charlie, they've had two or more turnovers in every single one of these games since going on this four-game win streak. We can't say enough about what Lou Anaromo and what the defense continues to do to help uh, provide more complimentary production when it comes to winning these games. They don't have any guys probably who will, who will get all pro or maybe even Pro Bowl starter recognition outside for outside of Trey Hendrickson. But they have a number of players who are like right at that next tier, like kind of star type, you know, A minus players. And when you have so many of those guys, you win games. No one better in the league at what he does than DJ Reader. Trey Hendrickson, a top five pass rusher at every metric. Logan Wilson, one of the five, three best linebackers in coverage in the league. Cam Taylor Britt, statistically by every measure, few corners are outproducing what he's done this year. Right. The Bengals think Dax Hill is going to be a pro bowler one day. Mike Hilton was probably the defense's best player against Buffalo. He changes the math with how aggressive and physical he is as a slot corner. They just have a lot of good players playing at a high level. And Josh Allen said there are no weak links on that defense. There's no one you can attack. They're sound, they're disciplined, they're physical and well-rounded. That's why this has been a good defense for three years now. Cincinnati Bengal fans, this is something you got to show up and show out. You get to vote on the Pro Bowl. And I can tell you right now, you have a Pro Bowl defensive end in Trey Hendrickson. You have a Pro Bowl cornerback in Cam Taylor Britt. You have two Pro Bowl linebackers. I would not take a pair of linebackers in this league. We played against arguably the two best against the San Francisco 49ers, right? Um, and uh, as much as I love Fred Werner, as much as I love Drake Greenlaw, our guys are better. That's right. Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt are better. So these guys are guys who I think should be going to the Pro Bowl this year. I, I think many of them were deserving last year, but certainly as we move forward this year, Cam Taylor Britt is putting together a Pro Bowl campaign. I want to talk to you about the Houston Texans. Let's preview that game. We got Basically, two Ohio State Buckeye quarterbacks in this game. Yeah, Joe, Joe spent more time there than he did at LSU, even though he won the championship at LSU. He went to both schools. He's Mr. Ohio football as a high school player. And here comes C.J. Stroud. Rookies are not supposed to be doing what he's doing right now. On Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Charlie, he set a single-game passing mark, the most passing yards by a rookie in the 104-year history of our league. 470 yards passing, five touchdowns, zero interception, and they weren't garbage yards. This was in a come-from-behind, game-winning touchdown drive that the rookie did this against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What should the Bengals be concerned about when it comes to C.J. Stroud? So there was one of those plays on that last drive where Stroud won it in a miracle way for, for Houston. Basically a bench corner out toward the sideline and finding a soft spot in zone coverage. We were talking to Bengals offensive coordinator Brian Callahan about Stroud yesterday. He said that is basically the same throw that Burrow made against San Francisco, against the 49ers, one of the plays that put the game away. The Bengals were so impressed at that throw that Zach Taylor literally you know, pumped his fist into the air to celebrate it. Yeah. Well, here you have a quarterback in Stroud who's doing very similar things. Mm -hmm. There are no easy buttons or, or you know ways they're trying to make life easy for the rookie in Houston. They're throwing the full offense at him. He is making big league throws. He's making aggressive decisions. He's playing fearless. And when you combine that with all the physical talents he has, he's already a real impact quarterback. Now, here is what really has me concerned. The offense the Bengals are going to see week 10 when Houston Texans come to town. This is essentially the 49ers offense. You know, Bob Slowick Jr., right? Came over from the 49ers. This guy, he knows the run game. He knows the pass game. And that's why you can look uh, to Sunday's game 
the Texans had three receivers with over 110 yards in that game. The tight end, Dalton Schultz, also um, Noah Brown, and then Tank Dell has been phenomenal. I haven't even talked about Nico Collins. They've got multiple receivers, plus a tight end, who can all hit you up for 100 on any given Sunday. This is a far cry from last year's Houston Texans. I have a lot of respect for how they've built this because, you know, those receivers you named, they're, they're not household names across the league, but what they are are very specific archetypes of players. Brown, more of a physical contested catch winner. Uh, Tank Dell, your classic speed guy. They have a power back. They have a change of pace back. They have all of these pieces you can fit together and almost experiment different types and different iterations of the offense. It makes them a very versatile group. Combine that with a coordinator who brings a lot of innovative, interesting ideas. Stroud's just in position to be successful. And you're seeing that translate for an offense that, again, even though it's not a lot of big names, does a lot of things well. Very similar on the defensive side as well. A bunch of veterans who have been here before who can run multiple versatile schemes. And, again, I've played a lot of ball in the league. And it's it's not lost on me that when we played the Niners, albeit that our offensive defense – played very well. The Niners, uh, Brock Purdy, uh, nearly 400 yards mm-hmm. passing in that game, had two wide receivers in Brandon Ayuk, as well as George Kittle, who went over the 100-yard mark in receiving. I see very similar uh, offenses. Yeah, they don't have the big-name uh, receivers, but they've got a quarterback who can flat-out sling it, and they've got, um, I think, the parts within the offense that fit very well that will allow them to be productive. They're 4-4. Four and four. Uh, tell me, uh, is this going to be a close game? Should the Bengals fans uh, be more concerned? Because this isn't, again, I say it again, this isn't last year's Houston Texans. I see them being much more competitive this season. There's one area where they still are a shade of last year's Houston Texans, and that's up front in their offensive line. Got a great left tackle, but they're playing multiple backups right now. One of the hardest things for a quarterback to do, and you can see Burrow doing it now, is these, like I said earlier, off schedule, off script. What do you do when everything breaks down around you? You've seen worse games from Stroud. That has been a theme. I've never seen the Bengals pass rush look as good as it does now. Um, I'm very impressed with what that group's been able to do. I see that continuing. The Bengals are a tough team to beat right now. I can see them winning this one, not quite comfortably, but uh, kind of having the upper hand all game like they did against Buffalo. Uh, very important for us to get out to a lead so that we put them in that known situation where they got to throw it to beat us. Because I do believe our defensive line can win out. I love the depth on this defensive line, Charlie. I love our interior defensive line. B.J. Hill has been uh, a phenomenal steal from the New York mm-hmm. football Giants. That's all I can say. And oh, by the way, this game means a lot to one DJ Reader. Tell the people why. This is where DJ Reader came from. DJ Reader, one of the biggest pieces in the Bengals becoming who they've been. Yeah. Zach Taylor said when he got to Cincinnati, DJ Reader was a guy who was willing to be very, very honest about how he felt about how the Bengals were doing things. Yeah. And BJ's voice in that process was so well respected that he very, very quickly became a captain. Uh, yeah. One of the guys who's just one of the core fundamental pieces, what's made the, the Bengals, against smart, versatile, complex, fiery defense, what it is, has been DJ Reed. He was also one of the guys that allowed uh, the veterans to understand what they had in Joe Burrow, mm-hmm. who was just a rookie and became a leader because DJ Reader was a well-respected um, within that locker room, but he also had a lot of respect for Joe Burrow and some of the things that Joe had to say to the team when he stood up and spoke. And if you can win a guy like DJ Reader over, you win over everybody. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Charlie, we want to thank you. Great information. We appreciate you doing your homework. You're bringing it as usual. My friend, we want everyone to go to CincinnatiInquirer.com uh, to read your work. You do great, outstanding work. So Keep up the great job. We want to thank you for joining us right here on a Believe in Bingo podcast, right here on Valley Sports Ohio. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code Believe50. Bet Online has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, Live in game betting, no matter what, your football betting needs are met at Bet Online. And again, make sure you use that promo code 
believe 50 B L E A V five zero to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts.